should be paying attention to. The Farm Bill does many things. Uh, it addresses, you know, uh, uh, along with EPA, things like safe water and environmental concerns related to health and nutrition. Uh, but uh, the most important thing that it does for many of us is it puts food stamps, uh, food supports in our uh, on our tables uh, in the form of food support assistance, helping us to buy groceries uh, to address our health and nutrition needs. The fact is that there are uh, better than 40 million, uh, estimated somewhere between 41 and 42 million people around this nation who depend upon food stamps in order to put uh, much needed food on the table for themselves, for their children, for their families. And uh, what is happening is every five years, the Farm Bill is uh, up for uh, reconsideration and uh, in a new, you know, a new language, a new bill, new terms. Well, the last time it was approved and turned into an act was 2014. So Congress has to move and decide uh, in late September what the farm bill beginning in 2019 will be. If they don't vote on it, then it can continue. Uh, but uh, right now they are looking at what the terms of it will be. It's usually a bipartisan activity to come together to figure out what can and and cannot, what should and should not be done with respect to the farm bill. But this year, the Republicans decided to go it alone. And uh, Republican Conaway uh, decided that he was going to draft a bill pretty much on his own uh, in the House. And what has come out is a bill that has the potential to move uh, an estimated somewhere between uh, you know, as many as maybe five to eight million people off of food stamps in the coming years. Uh, how does it do that? The bill that is being proposed has more rigorous requirements around work and work uh, workforce sure, development. Sure, sure. It's not to say that people should not work while receiving food stamps. In fact, many of the people who do receive food stamps actually work. But it is imposing more, uh, more rigorous requirements around work. It's saying whereas, you know, in many instances, in most states, you have to work at least if you're an able-bodied individual between the ages of 18 and 49, you have to work at least 80 hours a month or show that you're looking for work or being engaged in workforce training. This new bill would say that you have to show that you're working at least 20 hours per week. Now, that's a problem in many places because work is hard to come by. There are certain communities where uh, we do have more and more jobs, but in many communities, work is still hard to come by or it's sporadic or you may have family needs that present that don't uh, don't allow you to work those full 20 hours if you don't work them you might lose your staff benefits uh, not just for a day not just a week not just a month but you could lose them for years additionally it's changing the uh, categorical eligibility and requirements around who must work and now saying that people between the ages of 50 and 59 must work uh, that can be a problem too because again uh, in many places work is not easily accessible and the older you get some Sometimes it's hard to find a job. It's also requiring that if you uh, have a child over the age of six uh, and you are seeking food support, that you will have to work. Well, again, in many uh, places around this country, it is hard to come by child care that is affordable after school child care. And so you have a situation where people who are caring for their children may be compromised. Ultimately, what may result is that not only will individuals be taken off of food stamps, uh, adults, you know, because they may not meet work requirements, but their children children will be as well. And it is estimated that uh, for every, you know, that like there's like it's like one to two that uh, with respect to children uh, receiving uh, food supports, that for every adult you may have, you know, as many as one to two children who are uh, receiving food supports through that adult. And so this could be a real problem. The additional challenge that presents is that food supports, like food stamps, uh, otherwise, you know, they, uh, it's got a more fancy name. Um, but most people know it as food supports. But what happens with this is that uh, these, when you have food stamps and you put them back into the community, you buy groceries, you generate uh, an, uh, the economy. You boost the economy. We could see a significant trail off of, you know, like economic growth that also leads to work opportunities. So it's a real problem. Uh, nobody's really talking about it. Uh, the Congress doesn't have to vote until the end of September, but we really need to be on top of it now, helping to make sure that people understand. Again, I said that, you know, there are as many as 41 million people who are relying on food uh, food supports. And uh, as many as, you know, I think it's nearly 10 million who uh, were actually helped to, uh, you know, be lifted out of poverty with food stamps, uh, you know, in recent years. 
this is a real problem and people need to be paying attention to it. We need to be calling our congresspersons. We need to be uh, campaigning against those who will not support food supports to pe put healthy food and nutrition, nutritious food on the table for low-income individuals. You're absolutely correct. And all this is coming at the same time as, you know, during this time of year, gas prices normally have to creep up a little bit because gas stations around the country have to, you know, retrofit their uh, facilities for the summer blends that are coming in. And on top of all of that, you've got all this uncertainty over this Iran deal that uh, President Trump is planning on pulling out of. He's got until May 12th to make up his mind, but that was also, analysts are saying, is going to push gas prices to over $3 a gallon this summer. So you got you got rising gas prices and you got people having their income and their ability to feed their families cut. It's gonna be a long hot yes, summer, y'all. Eight seven seven five three two five seven nine seven. You better listen up to what uh, uh Jennifer said. Call your congressman, tell him listen, if you do this, you're out. Let's go to the phones and take some phone calls. Eight seven seven five three two five seven nine seven. Let's go to line five and welcome Spencer from Atlanta listening on thirteen eighty W A O K. Spencer, you got any thoughts about this? Andre, Andre Hagler Sean, the most distinguished name in show business. Come on, man. And I was so happy to hear. He, I was so happy. No, I mean that um, I'm 71 years old. I don't say that. I don't mean. Well, thank you for that. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, I was so happy to hear my lady baby from Atlanta, Mary Pat. She represented. Now, I take on all this business. That, that's a young lady who's destined for, destined for something wonderful. And um, I just want to say to the general, I know he don't want to refer to himself as that, because Reverend Sharpton is not a self-aggrandizing person. Mm -hmm. But he's been referred to as the general of civil rights, and I agree with that totally. He's the general, and he got a lieutenant in Andre Eglishon that's got his back. But uh, as far as this Kanye West, I hope I'm still on topic. Um, as far as this Kanye West thing goes, I. Uh, I'm not, I'm 71 years old. I'm not that much into uh, rap music. I didn't even know who Kanye West was. But the first time, <laughs> but the first time I saw him, I say, that boy ain't rap type. Spencer, we appreciate you. I knew that from the. We out of time, Spencer. I, I appreciate your kind words and I appreciate your contribution to the show today. You know, Kanye West, uh, Jennifer, it looks like he wants to become one of the bootstrap cutters.